hear the brother going over, uh, you know you're an Israelite, you're going over you're from the tribe of Judah. Okay, from one being, from one person we grew to be many. Now I know they had said a long time ago that there was other peoples on the earth a long time ago, but from one being, it started with Adam. Right. Okay. Was he black or was he white? He had to be black. Adam Bring it on. Black. Huh? Genesis 2 and 7. Adam was a black man. That's I'm going right. to read it out the Bible and we're going to get into that. Genesis 2 and 7. Book of Genesis chapter 2 and verse 7. Bring it out. And the Lord thy God. Excuse me. And the Lord God formed man from the dust of the ground. Say God formed man from the dust of the ground. So you're correct. The dirt of the ground is darker. The deeper you dig in the soil, it's darker. So yeah, the first man was black. Man, all the nations that was created on earth prior to Genesis 25, all of those were dark-skinned races. Right. They'd be Ethiopians, Africans, Israelites, Bring it out. Uh, Jebusites, Moabites, Ammonites, all of them was dark races. Right. So it's about your nationality, not off the dark skin. Right. That's why the brother brought out the scriptures and numbers about the seed comes of your fathers. Because right. it's a lot, every race anciently is dark. So it's not about the color, it's about the seed. That's right. You're an Israelite, according to Deuteronomy 28 and the curses. All right. Give me first Maccabees 3 verse 43. I want to show you what the whole agenda is for us even coming out here doing what we do. No. You're an Israelite. Right. From the tribe of Judah, right? Read 1 Maccabees 3, verse 43. Book of Maccabees. 1 Maccabees, chapter 3, and verse 43. Bring it out. They said one to another, let us restore the decayed state of our people. So that's the mission. We are here to restore the decayed state of our people. Because right. when you look around, the Israelites are in a dead state of mind. Right. Meaning we don't know who we are. We don't know our nationality. Right. We don't know our heritage. Right. We don't know our name. Right. Right. Hebrew is a language. Right. That's the language we originally spoke. Because right. over when you look at it four, five hundred years, our people being indoctrinated with American system so much to where we walk around and our brains are completely upside down. Right. All because of the filth that we were taught in America. Right. So when somebody asks you who you are, you don't know who you are. We say African American, we say black. But that's not who we are, we are the Israelites. Wow. But the word of God is gonna pressure wash the filth up out of your mind and turn your mind right side up. Right, right. right. So that's why we are raising up our people to come back to the laws. Right. So I want to show you repentance and what's the importance of keeping the laws. Right. Greek holy children, verse 14. Because straying away from our heritage is the result you got right now. We're at the bottom of the barrel. Look at the educational system that we have. That has lied to our people. We should know who we are. We should know our history. We should know everything prior to slavery. But right. not according to the religions here, the educational systems here, the jobs that we have, everything was designed to keep us down. Why? Because we broke the commandments. Listen to this. Three holy children, verse 14. Three holy children, verse 14. You know, for we, oh Lord, are become less than any nation. This is what we think in all our minds, Lord, we have came, we become low than every nation on earth. Right. Every nation has a land, right. their own resources, right. they have their own money, right. their own currency, right. they have their own laws. Right. We don't have any. Read. That's right. And be kept under this day in all the world. We are kept under all the day. We the first ones fired at a job. We the last ones hired at a job. Right. We the ones struggling, worrying about how to pay rent, right. how to pay light bills, how to take care of our children. Why? We look at the, the American design that we have. Then, as far as our children go, 40 hours a week, they've been indoctrinated in the educational system. You can't even raise your children. Right. We at work 60 hours a week. The children at school 40 hours a week. Right. Then what we do on Sunday by being lost is take them to a church. Right. So you're looking at over 40, 50 hours of destruction to our children. Right. And also the grown folks. Right. Be kept under this day all the world because of our sins. Because of what? Because of our sins. Get sin. Our sins have caused all this to happen to us. Didn't nobody wake up and say, let's go get these Negroes and put them in slavery. Right. Let's put them at the bottom. Right. The Lord allowed that because we broke the commandments. Right. Same way we did back then, we're doing it today. Right. A lot of people don't know today is the seventh day and that the day is for them. It's right. between us and the Lord, not every nation. Right. Sunday has nothing to do with us. Right. That's a doctrine that deceived our people for 400 years. Right. That's why our brain is upside down. Right. Oh. Book of 1st Judge, chapter 3, verse 4. Bring it out. Whosoever committed sin, transgressed also the law. 
for sin is the transgression of the law. So we ask our people what sin is, they don't know. Sin is the breaking of God's law. Right. That's what it is. So when we don't wear fringes, that's sin. When we shave our hair, that's sin. Right. When we shave our beard, that's sin. Right. When we celebrate holidays, that's sin. Right. When we buy and sell today on the Sabbath day, that's a sin. Right. There's laws pertaining to the Sabbath to instruct you how to keep the Sabbath. You don't keep it the way you want to keep it. Read, read it again. Whosoever committed sin transgresses also the law. For sin is the transgression of the law. You see all these buses moving and people going to work? They in transgression of the law. That's right. It's the Sabbath. Because right. they have the Sabbath. Right. We're not supposed to work on the Sabbath. We're not supposed to cook on the Sabbath. We're supposed to fellowship and congregate. We're not supposed to buy a sale on the Sabbath either. Right. right. But we wasn't taught that. We was taught go to church on Sunday, catch the Holy Ghost, get baptized. They don't even follow the example of water baptism in the Bible. Right. It was only symbolic of what Christ was coming to do when he came to baptize us. Not no dumping in the water. And when they dumped in the water doing John the Baptist, they confessed their sins. Right. And they had to know the law to know why they, what they're confessing. Right. Right. They don't do that in church. You go in a doctor, you come out one. You right. go in a homo, you come out one. Jeez. You go from a dry center to a wet damn center. Right. Come out and do the same thing week in and week out. That's, That's right. what's been destroyed. Bring it out. That's why the scriptures say, let us restore the decayed state of our people. Right. We are destroyed mentally and spiritually. Right. We shouldn't be walking around like this. But that's the way we made it. Why? Because we broke the commandments. Right. Romans 2 and 13. But you know, they changed that the Sabbath back in the 60s. Yes, I was, I was, but the Sabbath in the Bible was instituted always the seventh day. People can't change anything. That's what they indoctrinated the Negro with. The Sabbath never changed. Israelites changed right. because of religions and doctors of the other nations. Right. The Arabs tried to change it. Esau did change it. The Caucasians did change it. Everybody in church on Sunday. I want people breaking today to get ready to go break more laws and idolatry and false worship come Sunday. Right. You say Esau? Esau the Caucasian race according to the Bible. Oh, okay. That's what I mean. Oh, okay. Read that. Book of Romans chapter 2 verse 13. Bring it out. For not the hearers of the law are just before God. So just because we sit here giving you the laws, talking about the laws, that ain't that don't make none of us just. Just because we hearing the laws, we can hear right. it all day. We heard it since Moses. We heard it under all the prophets. Right. We heard it with Christ. Right. We heard it with the apostles. We still in captivity. We still at the bottom. We still destroy so as our children. Right. Our souls is being broken up. Are we gonna say at the bottom? That all depends on us. I'm going to get to that. Read. But the doers of the law should be justified. Who should be justified? But the doers of the law should be justified. See, that's the problem that we had. We knew the laws. We heard the laws. But the problem was actually applying the laws. All right. We can sit here and talk to you all day and give you laws. But if you don't apply, it's unprofitable to you. It's unprofitable to the whole nation. Right. It's like the nation went when the captivity as a nation together. We're going to be delivered together. Right. Christ came for the Israelites. He died for the Israelites. And he's coming back to deliver those same Israelites. Right. There ain't no such thing as God love everybody. That's a lie. That's been indoctrinated for over 400 years. Right. Read it again. Romans chapter 2 verse 13. Come on. Get out. For not the hearers of the law are just before God. So you being a hearer, that does make you just before God. That doesn't get you into the kingdom. That doesn't get you good grace of Christ. Come on. But the doers of the law should be justified. But the doers of the law shall be justified. So meaning what? We Now that you're hearing the law, what must you do next? You must repent. Do, give me Deuteronomy 30, I think that's verse 19. Because you asked us we're going to stay in this condition. Right? Because we've been in hell before, say 500 years. Yeah. We've been, I know you're tired of being here. We all tired of being here. That's why we out here. Right. right. To wake up the lost sheep of the house of Israel. That's right. Go and teach the Israelites, the blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans who've been destroyed as a result of captivity and slavery. Right. Read that. Deuteronomy 30. Yeah, read that. Book of Deuteronomy, chapter 30, verse 19. Bring it out. I call heaven and earth to record this day against you. Heaven and earth, today is a witness for these things that we're speaking unto you. We're speaking the laws of God to you, showing you Israelites and showing you what we must do to get out these conditions. Come on. That I have set before you life and death. There it is. He said, I set before you life and death. Proverbs 72. What is the life? So you got a choice. Yeah. Just like Moses gave us a choice when we came out of Egypt, we got a choice today. Right. Christ right. came and died for us and gave us that grace and gave us that repentance. Right. Now it's set before us again. Life or death. Right. What's life? 
of Proverbs chapter 7 and verse 2. Keep my commandments and live. Do what? Keep my commandments and live. He say keep my commandments and live. So today if you choose life, you're going to choose to keep the commandments that's being brought to you. Now, there's no excuse for you to go out and break the Sabbath. You understand the laws of the Sabbath? What are we supposed to do on the Sabbath? We're supposed to worship God on the Sabbath. What's the laws of the Sabbath? What do you mean there's laws? Sir? Right, you're not supposed to buy nothing with else. No buying or selling, no cooking, no working on the seventh day. You must fellowship. Read that again. Yeah. Look at Deuteronomy chapter 30 and verse 19. Check it out. I call heaven and earth to record this day against you. Heaven and earth is the witness today against you and you too, brother. You too with the muscle shirt. Come on. I had fun. That I have set before you life and death. So today is going to be life and death. So what you choose? You choose life, what you choose? Huh? Life. You choose life. All right, come on. Blessing and cursing. Blessing and cursing. So if you choose life to keep the commandments, that's when we'll be blessed. That's when we'll be delivered. That's when our conditions will slowly and surely start to change. Come on. Therefore. But if you choose that, that's we're going to continue to stay at the bottom. Matters are going to get worse and worse. Come on. Therefore, choose life. That both thou and thy seed may live. Because what you do today do affect the generations to come. Absolutely. Just like we broke the laws coming out of Egypt and Moses, we are reaping the, the scars of breaking those commandments. Our children reaping the same scars. We all went to captivity. We all in religions. We all get shot down in the streets. Those are the curses that we suffer. We still under the curses now. That's why we have to come out here and teach and raise up the Israelites. Bring them back to the Lord. Bring them back into repentance. Revelations 2 and 26. You know, I'm going to show you the very importance of repenting because there's a reward for that. It's a judgment for breaking the laws and it's a reward for keeping the laws. Right. And the Lord is going to give you your recompense according to what you're doing. Right. That. The book of Revelations, chapter 2, verse 25. Bring it out. But thou, which ye have already, hold fast. You say, what you have, hold fast till he come. Meaning these, this Bible. The law, statutes, the commandment that's instituted here for us to follow. Keep these commandments. The more you learn, the more you apply. Hold that fast no matter what you're going through. No matter the trials, your conditions, or your situations. Do not astray away from the commandments of God. Read it again. Revelations chapter 2, verse 25. You know, but that which ye have already, hold fast till I come. Hold that fast, which is these commandments, right? Come on. And he that overcometh, he that overcome, overcome what? Sin, the battles you deal with, the hardships you go through. No matter what you go through, you're going to continue to go in these scriptures, learn, obey, and keep the commandments. So he that overcome these things, come on. And keepeth my works. And keep Christ's works, which is what? The commandments, come on. Unto the end. Unto the end, either you die first or Christ return, come on. To him will I give power over the nations. What did he say? To him will I give power over the nation. That's Isaiah right. 14. He said, I'm going to give you power over the nations. We had power once before, but we strayed away from the commandments. Now we have no power. We have no might. We have no businesses. We can't force no laws. We can't even police our own people. Why? Because we strayed away from the commandments. Now when he said, you're going to rule over the nations, I'm going to show you what an example of that is. Read what you got. Isaiah chapter 14, verse 1. Bring it out. For the Lord will have mercy on Jacob. The Lord said you're going to have mercy on Jacob. Jacob is right here, these 12 tribes of Israel. So no, I'll, even though we're in sin, even though we went against the Lord, but in our repentance and returning back, he said, I'm going to still have mercy on Jacob, the 12 tribes of Israel. Come on. And will yet choose Israel and set them in their homeland. He said you're going to set us in our homeland. According to Galatians, that's Israel and in Jerusalem. That's our homeland, America, not our homeland. Right. We've been brought, yeah, we going back, but we've been brought off here in slavery. Even today, we're still in captivity. Just because the yoke's gone doesn't mean we're free. We need passports to leave. We need a driver's license to drive. We got to get permission for everything in this country. Right. We don't own any resources. We don't pass any laws. We can't even choose the education system that our kids receive. They've been indoctrinated 40 hours a week 
plus the extra six on Sunday. Right. Come on. And the strangers shall be joined with them. So the strangers is referring to these other nations. Once we go back into rulership and Christ return, they're going to be joined too. But they have a specific place just like we have today. Come on. And they shall cleave to the house of Jacob. They should cleave to us. We're going to be the ruling class. We're going to be at the top of society. Come That's, on. Right. That's right. And the people shall take them and bring them to their place. We're going to snatch them up, take them, and bring them into their place. We're going to set where they're going to go. We're going to set their position. Right. We're going to shackle and chain right. them. Come on. And the house of Israel shall possess them in the land of the Lord for servants and handmaids. You know what possess means? Uh, to have on your person. Right. So if you, them shoes right there, that's your possession. Meaning they yours. Right. What do you say about the people? And the house of Israel shall possess them in the land of the Lord for servants and handmaids. You will possess. If you keep the commandments when Christ return, you will possess the other nations. Right. You're going to enforce God's laws on them. Right. They're going to live by the laws. You're going to put them in their place. You're going to choose what they do and don't do. You're going to give orders. You're going to pass the laws. That's the beauty of keeping the commandments in repentance. That's the right. promise that was given to the Israelites. That's right. Deuteronomy 76. Bring it out. You got more on that? Come on. And they shall take them captives who captives they were. So everybody that took us captives, we taking them captives. You understand that? Revelation 13 and 9. You got more on that? And they shall rule over their oppressors. We shall rule over our oppressors. Right. So not only the Caucasian race, the Arab race, That's the right. Chinese race, right. the African race, right. the right. Japanese race, right. the Russian, the Germans, how they try to separate themselves, they in this too. We're going to rule over them like they're ruling over us today. Get Revelation 13 and 9. So it's telling you that we're going to have slaves as well. Just like we're still slaves here. We're just mentally and spiritually destroyed. Right. They don't have to put chains on your neck once you destroy them. Right. Because you don't know anything. You're not trying to leave. You're not trying to find out who you are. You're not trying to learn your heritage. We're not trying to do anything but assimilate with today's society. Right. That's what's going to continue to keep us down, brother. Teach, come on. Teach. Revelation chapter 13, verse 9. That's what Christ said. Come on. And if any man have an ear, let him hear. If any man got any understanding, understand this. Come on. He that leadeth into captivity. He that led us into slavery, put us on them ships, shackled and chained us, beat us, robbed our women, sold our children, robbed the men. Come on. Shall go into captivity. The recompense, the payment is coming back on those nations. Come That's on. right, Roy. He that killeth with the sword. The one that threw millions off the boat of slavery. Who shoot us down in the street. Who kill our kids. Kidnap them. Come on. Must be killed with the sword. Now they might. Must be killed with the sword. He said they must be killed with the sword. Jer Jeremiah 30 verse 16. Bring it out. It goes on. Read Jeremiah 30 verse 16. This also goes into the judgment of the other nations. Read. Jeremiah chapter 30 verse 16. In case you got any doubt, understand this. Therefore, all they that devour thee, all the nations who took part in our demise and destroying our nation, who continue to destroy us today, set up laws and religions, educational system, the criminal justice system, the court system, the polices that come against and oppress us, shall be devoured. They shall be devoured. Come on. And all thine adversaries, all the adversaries, which is all the other nations, believe it or not, they are our enemies. They are God's enemies. So if they hate God, they hate his children. As That's well. right. Come on. Every one of them shall go into captivity. Every single one of them nations, they'll go into slavery. Its judgment is written. That's Ain't right. nothing nobody can do to change that. Right. Read. And they that spoiled thee. And though that spoiled us and got our mind, our brains turned upside down, come on. Shall be a spoil. We're going to spoil them with the commandments of God. There ain't going to be no more homosexuality, no more mixed race, no more eating pork, no more educational Bring it out. no more false doctrines, no more criminal justice system. God's system is going to get set up. And we're going to rule under Christ, the black Messiah. Come on. And all they, and all that prey upon thee will I give for a prey. We're going to hunt them down. That's right. We're going to set it up. 
We're going to set up a government. We're going to pass the laws. They're going to do what we tell them to do. That's the right. Christ and the Most High God. They're going to pass the order down. We're going to be the executors. We're going to prosecute the other nations. That's right. You understand that? You got any questions? I'm going too fast for you. No, you got any questions, brother? I love it. I love it. No questions? One, one question. Yes, sir. You said you, you spoke a while ago that God doesn't love everybody, but you know in the scripture he said I'll have compassion for all that I have created. I wish that none should perish. Talking about the Israelites. Give me first Kings 8 verse 61. Is that what I want? Okay, so you see a teacher that he's talking about a certain I'm gonna show you something. Go to Romans 9 13 first. Because that's a good statement you made, so we want to clear that up real quick. Yeah. Romans 9 verse 13. So you say all. Romans 9 to 13. Gotcha. I understand. Come on, let's go. Romans chapter 9, verse 13. Here we go. Let's speak. Come on. As it is written, Jacob have I loved. Jacob have I loved. Read. But Esau have I hated. Esau have I hated. Isaiah 40, verse 17. I think that's what I want. Isaiah 40, verse 17. It's still going into what you said about having compassion on all that I created, which was referring to the nation of Israel. So let's see about these other nations included as well. Isaiah 40, verse 15. Read. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 15. Bring it out. Behold, the nations are as a drop of a bucket. He say the nations are as a drop of a bucket. So you got a bottle of water, and it's ice cold or whatever like that. When you pull it out the cooler, drops of water fall off. You're not worried about that, ain't you? Read it again. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 15. Come on. Behold, the nations are as a drop of a bucket. Come on. And are counted as the small dust of, of the balance. You say they count as small dust on the balance. That's nothing. When you put some little dust on the balance, on the scale, it doesn't weigh up to nothing. Say it to 6 and verse 54. So he, so I want to get right to the point. I want to go and let it on the head for you. See, he created everybody. Right. You're right about that. Right. But who is he talking about? I'm going to answer that right here. 2nd Ezra 6, verse 54. 2nd no. Ezra chapter 6, verse 54. No. And after these, Adam also, whom thou madest Lord of all thy creatures, of him come we all. So Adam is the father of all races upon the earth. But he say of him come we all, because every single nation come out of Adam. Come on. And the people also whom thou has chosen. He say everybody came out of Adam as well as the people he chose. Right. Who the people he chose? Children of, Israel, Children of Israel. That's who he chose. So everybody come from Adam. Also the people he chose to be his people come out of Adam. Now let's see this. Come on. All this have I spoken before thee, O Lord, because thou madest the world for our sakes. He made the world for the 12 tribes of Israel. That's right. The whole planet Earth belongs to you. So we can't be satisfied with good jobs. We can't be satisfied with materialistic things. We can't be satisfied right. with nice cars and rims. The whole Earth belongs to you. Right. Resources, the lands, even the people belong to you. They supposed to be in servitude to you. Come on. Second Ezra chapter 6, verse 56. As for the other people. As for the other people, mean all the nations outside the 12 tribes, come on. Which also come of Adam. Which also come from Adam, read. Thou has said that they are nothing. What do you say about the other nations that come from Adam as well? They are nothing. God say they are nothing, brother. That's right. You are the kings and priests of this earth. That's they right. mean nothing to God. So when he say you have the compassion, that pertains to the children of Israel. Right. The commandments were given to you. You was brought up out of Egypt. You the one supposed to be set on high. You from the lineage of Christ, David, Solomon, Paul, the apostles. Bring it up. Those your ancestors and forefathers who wrote this book. Right. Deuteronomy 10 and 12. I want to take, leave you with this here. Before we leave, Deuteronomy 10, verse 12. We'll show you an importance. Now, you know all this. What must you do? What's the next step? Read. Deuteronomy chapter 10, verse 12. And now, Israel, what doeth the Lord thy God require of thee? What do the Lord require of you now that you know you're Israel? You know you must keep the laws, so there's no excuse. What do he require of you now? Come on. Keep the commandments. But to fear the Lord thy God, to walk in all his ways. To walk in all the ways of the Lord. The scriptures, the commandments that's written in this Bible, these are God's ways. That's how we search out the Lord and find out what is commanded of us, how he instructed us to live, walk, talk, eat, treat our brothers and treat our wives. Come on. 
and to love him. And to do what? Love him. Love is a what? What kind of word? It's an action word. Right, so if I got a wife, and I'm telling I love her, and I'm beating on her, do I love her? <laughs> no, no it has to be brought forth by actions. Yeah, Come on. right. And love is keeping the commandments of God. First John 5 and 3. Come uh, on. And to serve the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul. Meaning what? You're supposed to speak according to the law. Right. You're supposed to live according to the law. Right. You're supposed to dress according to the law. Right. You're supposed to eat according to the law. Right. You're supposed to deal with your brothers according to the law. Right. Your wife, your children according to the law. Come on. Verse 13. <laughs> to keep the commandments. To do what? To keep the commandments. To keep the commandments. Ecclesiastes 12 and 14. Last one. Bring it out. We must keep the commandments. That's what required to you. So I'm gonna sum up the whole conclusion of the whole matter. At the end of the day, what must you, what amount of man should you be on earth before Christ returns? Come on. Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 13. Bring it out. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Let's just sum it up in a nutshell. Get straight to the point. Come on. Fear God and keep his commandments. Come on. For this is the whole duty of man. This is your whole purpose on earth, Matthew 26. This is your whole purpose on earth. We're going to switch to the next teacher, but this is your whole purpose. To feel God, keep the commandments. The commandments is going to change your mind, resonate in your spirit, and manifest in your actions. Absolutely. Then you become that man who God created you to be. Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ. Please subscribe to our YouTube channels. Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us, subscribe to our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and podcasts, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org.